Okay, here we are back at it one more time, this time with lesson 7.4. Lesson 7.4 is about special right triangles. All right, there are two different kinds of special right triangles that we're going to talk about. Uh, they're called special right triangles because later on in our next couple lessons we're going to learn how to do some trigonometry with different angle measurements. But if we have the two kind of triangles we're going to talk about today, we don't need to use trigonometry. We don't need to go to decimals. We can use exact answers instead. So we're going to look at those today. And the uh, first video is going to just kind of show you the triangles, what they look like, how we come up with the numbers that go on them. And the second video will show you how to use those to find missing side lengths in these triangles. All right, so first thing we're going to start with is an isosceles right triangle. Okay, an isosceles right triangle. All right, we know that an isosceles triangle has two congruent sides. We also know that a right triangle, the hypotenuse is the longest side. So the leg cannot be congruent to a hypotenuse. So the legs have to be the two sides that are congruent. We also learned in a previous chapter that if we had two congruent sides, in a triangle, then we also had to have two congruent angles. And where those angles were located, remember, was across. So going from this side, we move across to this angle up here. And from this side, we move across to this angle over here. So if we take 180 degrees in a triangle, we subtract out the 90 degree angle here for the right angle, that leaves us with 90. And then we know these, these angles here in the corners are equal. So 90 divided by 2 is 45 degrees each. So. We don't get very fancy on this, all right? It's not complicated. We call this a 45, 45, 90 triangle, okay? 45, 45, 90 triangle. Now, what happens is that any triangle that has the angles of 45, 45, and 90, that triangle is similar to any other 45, 45, 90 triangle. And that comes from our angle-angle similarity postulate, which we learned earlier. All right, so, if we can come up with a set of side lengths that work on this triangle right here, then we can use a scale factor idea or a ratio, a proportion, to find any other side lengths in any 45, 45, 90 triangle at all. And that's what we're going to do in that second video today. I'm just going to show you what numbers we're going to use. Now what we could do is we could really call this side length right here and right here any number at all. We could call them 6, we could call them 4, we could call them 7, whatever. All right, but to make it easy, we want them to be reduced as far as possible when we start setting up our proportions. So all we do is call this 1. All right, so this side length right here is 1 unit long, which means since these are equal, this is also 1 over here. All right, now we need to find the missing side length. Well, that's another thing we've already learned, the Pythagorean Theorem. This is probably the easiest Pythagorean Theorem problem we've ever done in our entire life. So, A is 1, B is also 1, and C we don't know. So, 1 squared plus 1 squared equals C squared. Well, 1 squared is 1, 1 squared is 1, and we have equals C squared. 1 plus 1 is 2, which equals C squared. And then to get rid of the squared, remember we use a square root, they cancel each other out. So C equals root 2. All right? Root 2 cannot be simplified. Uh, if you type it into your calculator, you can get 1.414 and a bunch of other decimals and it just keeps going and going and going. It doesn't repeat. Uh, it never stops. It never ends. It never repeats itself. It's what we call an irrational number. All right, so we're just going to leave it as root 2 because that's more exact than going to a decimal and rounding it off. So we're going to take this root 2. We're going to put it up here in our triangle right here. So 1, 1, and root 2 are the three side lengths of a basic 45 45 90 triangle any other 45 45 90 triangle is going to be similar to this one and the sides will be in proportion to this one so what you need to do is you need to memorize these three numbers in order all right we always say them in order from smallest to largest and we match them up with the angles so one one root two Okay, so that means that any triangle I have from now on that is a 45, 45, 90 triangle, okay, so these sides are equal, all right, 45 and 45, these side lengths, I don't necessarily know what they are, but they are going to be in the proportion of 1, 1, root 2. 
Okay, the one has to go across from the 45, this one has to go across from the 45, and the root two has to go across from the 90. That's why you need to memorize those numbers in order. Right over here, the one goes across from the 45, the one goes across from the 45, the root two goes across from the 90. Okay, so we draw it out. I always put them in circles. You'll see more why we do that in the next video. Okay, but one, one, and root two. Okay, that's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. You need to memorize those numbers. One, one, root two. All right. Now the second special triangle that we're going to talk about is this one. Now, you may notice there's a slight problem here. If we look back at our first page, it says special right triangles. You notice this is not a right triangle. Okay, this is an equilateral triangle. All three sides are marked as being equal to each other. And we know that if a triangle is equilateral, it is also equiangular. 180 degrees divided by the three angles would give you 60 degrees, 60 degrees, and 60 degrees. Okay, this is obviously not a right triangle. However, if we draw the altitude right down the middle here, okay, so that it meets this down here at a 90 degree angle. Now, other than an altitude, we also know this is a perpendicular bisector. Okay, we can talk about why real quick. If a point is the same distance to the two endpoints of a segment, then that point is on the perpendicular bisector of the segment. So not only is this an altitude, it's also a perpendicular bisector, which means that this is congruent to this. Obviously this side is congruent to itself, so the triangle over here on the left and the triangle on the right are congruent by side, side, side. That means we have a 90 degree angle here, 60 degree angle here, and a 30 degree angle here. 30 plus 60 is 90, 90 plus 90 is 180. And then this was split evenly, left and right, because these triangles are congruent. So CPCTC makes sense. We got 30 degrees over here as well. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take just half of this triangle. All right. So it looks like this. All right. So let me get this in here a little bit better. All right. So we're just going to take half of this triangle. And we're going to fill in those angle measurements. So we just had a 60 degree angle and a 30 degree angle. Okay, now let's go back to this other one briefly. Okay, remember down here, this was a perpendicular bisector and an altitude both, which means it cut this side in half. So this little piece right here is half as long as this whole side, what is now our hypotenuse when we look over at this triangle, this. So this piece down here is half of that. Now we could write one up here and one half down here, but that makes our proportions hard. So instead, we're going to keep the shortest side, remember the shortest side is across from the smallest angle, so we're going to put a 1 here on the shortest side. All right. Remember, if this was 1, then this is also 1, because they're congruent by CPCTC and perpendicular bisector and all kinds of things, so these, these are both 1, so that means the whole side length is 2. But remember, we started off as an equilateral triangle, so this whole side length must also be 2. So we're going to come up here and put a 2. Now we don't know this side, okay? but it's a right triangle. We can find the missing side of a right triangle using the Pythagorean Theorem. Once again, this is a pretty easy Pythagorean Theorem, except that this is not C. This is A or B, whichever way you want to look at it. I'm going to call it B as I do my work. So 1 squared plus B squared equals 2 squared. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4. We subtract 1 from both sides, we get b squared equals 3. We take the square root of both sides, and we get b equals root 3. Alright, so we're going to take this root 3, we're going to move it up here onto this triangle, and we have root 3. Alright, so we call this a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Okay, we're not getting fancy or anything. It's pretty obvious why we call it a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And we put the sides in order. So across from 30 is our 1. I put a 1 right here. Across from 60 is a root 3. And across from 90 is a 2. Now keep in mind that the biggest side is across from the biggest angle. Smallest side's across from the smallest angle. If you type root 3 into your calculator, you're going to get 1.732 and a bunch of other decimals. 
Okay, it's part way between one and two. It's the middle side length. It's across from the middle angle, so that makes sense. So once again, if we have any other 30, 60, 90 triangle at all, it has to be similar to this 30, 60, 90 triangle by angle, angle, similarity postulate. It's got at least two congruent angles. So since those triangles would be similar, we can find missing side lengths on other 30, 60, 90 triangles by setting up proportions. And that's what we're going to do in that second video. Okay, so what you need to know for right now is that if you have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the side lengths have to be proportional in the order of 1, root 3, and 2, where the 1 is across from the 30, the root 3 is across from the 60, and the 2 is across from the 90, the 2 is on the hypotenuse. Right? So two things for you to memorize. Okay? 30, 60, 90 triangle have the sides of 1, root 3, and 2. Memorize these in this order. Okay? Don't start saying 1, 2, root 3, because then you're going to put the 2 over here, and you're going to put root 3 over there, and you're going to get everything wrong. Okay? Memorize them in this order. 1, root 3, 2. We also have our 45, 45, 90 triangle, which is in the order of 1, 1, root 2. Those are the only two things you must memorize in Lesson 7.4. Okay, and then I'll show you how to use those two things in the second video. Okay, right, one last time, 45, 45, 90, 1, 1, root 2, memorize it. 30, 60, 90, 1, root 3, 2, you notice there's no root here. People start to get confused every 9 with the root because there was a root over here. All right, but no root on this 2 over here. Okay, 1, root 3, 2. All right, memorize those numbers. We're going to use those uh, proportions as we move into the second video.